In this video, which is an introduction to the IPVO Visualizer software, I'm going to take you through the basic functions of the software in a way that's suitable for first time users. Let's start by having a look at where we can get the software from. So we need to go to ipvo.com and then we need to go to the software page. And the software we're interested in today is the IPVO Visualizer. So we'll click on that. Now, if we click on this free download button at the top here, we've got a variety of options. This software is available for Mac, for Windows, Chrome, Linux, iOS, Android, and Apple TV OS. And the main desktop operating systems, the Mac and the Windows, have the most features but the software is very similar whether you're using it on a phone, on a tablet, or on a computer. So all of the things I'm going to show you will be applicable to those devices where they appear. If you're on Windows, you've got two options. You can either go for the Windows 7 and above, which is a typical traditional program, or you can go for the Windows 10, which is via the Microsoft Store. They're very, very similar. There's just a couple of minor differences, but you can choose whichever you'd like. If you're not able to install software on your computer, for example, if you're in a school and you don't have access to be able to add software, you should still be able to use the Chrome version in your Chrome browser. To use the Chrome version, you need to go via this page. If you go straight to the Chrome App Store, you won't find it. So you go to download here, and that will then take you to the Chrome App Store where you can install it. I've obviously got it installed already. Let's jump into the software and have a look at the basic functions. So starting at the top of the Visualizer software, on the right hand side, we've got a full screen button. We've also got an information button which tells us about the camera we're currently using. Over on the left hand side, we've got a settings button. The only real thing you need to change in here to start with is where you're saving your pictures and videos. That's worth checking on. You've got a live stream button. You've got an open new window button, which opens another window, which could be a different camera. You've got a larger UI mode switch. So that will let you have big buttons. So if you're using it on an interactive whiteboard or something like that, you might want that. Coming down the side, we've got our select camera option. So I'm using the IPVO VZX camera, which is IPVO's top of the range. And because it's an IPVO camera, all the functions of the software work. In other, with other cameras, you'll get some things that are grayed out and you can't use if they're not IPVO cameras. I've got all these settings here so I can make sure that the image is bright enough. And if I need to keystone it, a bit like on a projector, if it's not square, the camera isn't square to the table, I can change how that looks to make sure that it lines up as it should do. Click with set to default if you want to go back to where it was. Then we've got the zoom button, which zooms in nicely. This is a digital zoom, not an optical zoom, but really useful if you're doing something like a science experiment and wanted to show detail. Then we've got a rotate button. So if your visualizer is positioned on your desk so that you can't rotate it easily to see what you want to be able to see, then you can use this to rotate. So you can either select 90, 180, 270, or the zero degrees, or you can do a free rotate for any angle that you want to. Then we've got a resolution option. This will show you the resolution of your camera that's available. So here I've got this set to the highest 16 by nine resolution that the VZX supports. It will go higher, but that's a four by three ratio. You can choose any ratio you want and any resolution to make sure it fits the screen you're using. You've got an exposure button, so if your image is a bit dark, you can make that brighter using the exposure as you need to. Then we've got a white balance option, which will automatically read the white balance, but if you need to change that, you can make it warmer or cooler. Once you move it, the white balance lock goes on. If you take that off, it will find the automatic white balance again. Then you've got a focus button. This is really important. You've got two focus options with the IPVO cameras. You've got Autofocus continuous and autofocus single. So continuous will mean that it will always try and find the focus of whatever's in the shot in the center of the image. If you click to single, it will fix on one focus and it will stay there. And then even if things move around or things move closer to the image, then it won't focus on those. You can also put it to manual focus, which is useful again if you're doing a science experiment or something like that, and you want to focus on a particular part of the experiment or what's under the visualizer, you can focus the image to wherever you need it to be. And if you want it to go back to autofocus at any point, just take the manual focus button off and it will automatically focus for you again when you put it into AFC. And there we go, it finds focus in the center of the image. 
At the bottom, we've got video filters. So you've got a variety of different looks that you can give to the image if you need to. On the bottom right, you've got a few buttons. You've got the light on and off button if you've got a visualizer that supports a light. You've got the freeze image button. So you can just freeze your image and then do something else with your computer while whatever you've got frozen stays on the projector. You've got a picture in picture option. So you can launch a picture in picture with a second camera. So here I've got two of the same camera, but I could change this to be a different camera if I wanted to be. And I can show two different images. I've got two cameras connected. Maybe you're using that for recording a lesson that you're gonna put on YouTube or something. And you want that second camera to be your webcam. You can choose that there and it has an automatic picture in picture within the software. You've then got some reading aids. So if I click once, what I get is this line that I can move up and down the screen to help indicate where we're trying to look at on the screen where we're reading. And there's a red dot that follows my pointer around. Now, if I click the left mouse button twice, I then get a zoom a magnification tool, which follows around that mouse pointer. So wherever I put my mouse pointer, that's where I'm gonna be zooming in. Really useful for again, focusing the attention. Click again, the left mouse button and it disappears. If I click this bottom again at the bottom, it will then mask the screen. So I've just got one little strip that's visible and that's really good for drawing attention to whatever you want the class to be looking at at the time. Set the button again to hide it. Then I've got some grid displays. So I've got a horizontal line there, I've got a vertical line, I've got horizontal and vertical lines into thirds. And then if I click a few more times, I've got different numbers of grid lines and again to hide them. And at the end here, we've got a focus button. So if you do want to focus your visualizer on something in particular in the middle of the frame, you can click that. Then at the bottom center, we've got our main action button. So at the moment, we're in snapshot mode, which is the default mode. So if I click this button here, the snapshot button, then I get an image captured of whatever's on the screen at the time. It saves to wherever I set my save location to. If I change my mode, then the action button is going to do something different. So we've got various modes. We've got recording mode, which will let you record video, including with audio if you've got a microphone connected. Then you've got a slow motion option and over here a time lapse option, which will do opposite things. Slow motion will obviously slow it down. Time lapse will take an image every few seconds and allow you to speed up what you're doing. So if you're doing a piece of art, for example, you could do a time lapse, speed that up and show how it's been produced. You've got a live stream button, uh, which allows you to broadcast straight to YouTube from within the software. You've got a scan a QR or barcode option. So if you've got, say, a textbook with QR codes that takes you to your web-based resource, you can scan those there and take you straight to it. You've got text-to-speech, which will scan text that's on the image and will read it out for you. You've got a scan document option, so you can put a page under the visualizer, it will find the corners and it will produce a nice um, copy of that document for you, which might be good for saving or even printing out. You've got a magnify option. If I click that, I get a magnifier, a bit like I had before, but this time I can drag it to wherever I want it to be and I can leave it there. And if I move my mouse, it stays magnified where I want it to be. That could be quite useful to magnify certain parts of the screen. Again, if I click the button down at the bottom there, on this mode that disappears, it will come back whenever I click for it. Then we've got a stop motion option, and this will allow us to take individual photos so we can produce a stop motion video rather than the time lapse, which will be on fixed time periods. This will allow us to choose when we take those pictures and do that stop motion. And at the bottom, we've got a split screen option so we can show two different cameras, one either side of the visualizer. Let me go back to the standard snapshot mode. We've also got here some writing tools to be able to annotate. So by default, we've got a pen here which defaults to red I can change the colors to whatever I want I can change the size of that and then when I've got that I can write on the screen however I want to so I can highlight things I can circle things do whatever I need to there and when you want to clear it you've got the eraser option which will erase little bits there or if I click away from the annotate then the whole thing disappears if I go back to it though, I've got those annotations again, so I can hide them and I can bring them back as I want to. If you want to clear everything, you just click on the erase option again and you click clear all and that will get rid of everything you need. So hopefully that made sense to you. I'll be putting together some videos going through some of the more advanced features of the IPVO Visualizer software. So look out for those. If you found that helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing. And if there's any videos that you'd like me to make, please leave a note in the comments and I'll add them to my list.